let's talk about the GPCR autoantibodies. So um, obviously very exciting. Um, so we're just going to have a chat about, uh, you know, what those tests mean, um, uh, what they're doing and like, and how that relates to like certain illnesses and how that, uh, how it could open up maybe using potential therapies. Yeah, so this test, um, so it's, it's being offered by our laboratory Rhythm Lab. And uh, it took a while to get this developed. We had to do a lot of uh, validation testing and everything, and we actually got it um, CLIA certified. So, um, you know, it, it, this, the results of this test can actually be used to make medical decisions um, because they reach the standard of accuracy and precision that's required for medical decision making, um, which is super exciting. That, that, was, that was a lot of work. And, um, you know, it's, uh, basically, the, the test panel it tests for autoantibodies against nine different GPCR receptors and against ACE2. ACE2 is not technically a GPCR, um, but um, these are all like uh, pretty critical receptors for function of things like your autonomic nervous system. So things like your your beta one receptors for the adrenergic system, beta two. You've got alpha one. We've got muscarinic receptors one and two. Um, also, there's endothelin receptors and uh, certain um, angiotensinogen receptors. So um, it's a whole host of these. And a lot of the things that these receptors play a role in, and this is just a limited explanation. They play so many roles in the body. It's hard to go over them. But, um, you know, a lot of them play a role in things like how fast your heart rate goes. Also, like how your blood vessels either dilate or constrict things like immune system function. So even uh, certain immune cells actually have beta-2 adrenergic receptors on them. And so things like adrenaline and noradrenaline that can be released by your fight or flight system um, and can also be um, enhanced by certain medications or drugs, those can activate these receptors to cause different functions. Um, and so having autoantibodies against these receptors the thing is, this this test that we have, it doesn't tell you the function of the antibody. So it just tells you that this antibody, which is kind of like a Y-shaped protein, and it just like will just go and bind to it, the receptor. So if my fist is a receptor, can bind to it, but we don't know exactly where it's binding. And we don't know when this thing binds, does it make this receptor less likely to activate? Does it block it? Or is it like binding to it and activating it? We don't know. And so that's where the 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 difficulty and in interpretation of this test comes in is you kind of have to like really look through the patient's symptoms and match it up to if you've got let's say the beta 2 receptor autoantibody is high for a patient so let's say you know that one comes back elevated the way i'd kind of approach it in my mind is like i'd say okay let's look at this patient's symptoms Let's say this person got COVID, you know, a year ago, and then they started getting really dizzy when they stand up and we did orthostatic vitals on them and they have orthostatic hypotension, meaning they stand up and their blood pressure drops significantly. So they're walking around and they're not getting enough blood to their head. They're foggy, they're dizzy, they're tired. Um, and let's say they have this beta two autoantibody. So in that case, I'd be looking at things like, okay, their blood pressure is dropping when they stand. Let's say they also have like kind of purplish discoloration of their feet and their lower legs when they stand up. What that kind of tells me is that their blood when they stand is just pooling in their legs. Gravity is just pulling all that blood south mm -hmm. and their body is not able to force all that blood back up to get to their heart and their head. And so that can cause, you know, a bunch of different symptoms that they may be experiencing. So when you look at what the beta-2 receptor does, when it's activated, what does it do? It causes the blood vessels to dilate, get bigger. When it's inhibited, it's going to reverse that effect. So you may have a little bit more of a constrictive effect. So if you think about it, when someone stands up, the veins in the legs are basically filling up with a bunch of blood and they're just kind of ballooning out. And all of that blood is kind of turning their legs a bit purple. And so that blood's not getting to their head. So I would assume based on their symptoms that that antibody may be activating that beta-2 receptor and causing a little bit of vasodilation, or at least it may be blocking the body's signal saying when they stand up, hey, you need to, you need to constrict your blood vessels, you know, otherwise you're going to pass out. And it's just that signal's not getting there possibly because this antibody might be interfering. 